Welcome to another video in the series Inventory Management. In this video, we will look at the various aspects of inventory costs. Now, in making any decision with respect to inventory, different types of costs should be taken into consideration. These costs are typically in conflict with each other Therefore, while making inventory decisions, to minimize the total inventory cost of the system, all the costs must be considered in parallel. So let us look at these costs and how they impact the business. So the first one that we we'll look at is holding or carrying costs. Now this category is divided into three segments. So let us look at these segments one by one. So the first one is storage cost. Storage cost includes the cost of the storage facility such as rent or depreciation, insurance, taxes, utilities, security and facility personnel. Now let's look at the second type of cost. This is the capital costs. Now the capital cost can vary depending on the firm's financial situation. For example, if the firm has an excess of cash, then the capital cost is the interest lost by putting the money into inventory instead of any other interest earning financial instrument. So the firm could have put it in a financial instrument and earned some interest on it whereas they have bought the inventory so they are not able to earn the interest on it. Second is that if the firm has an alternative project to invest in then the capital cost is the opportunity cost of the anticipated return on that project. So if they could have used that money which they have used to buy inventory to buy or install a new project. So if they had installed a new project, they could get returns out of it. Whereas now they have invested in inventory where they are not getting any returns. If the firm has to borrow funds to maintain inventory, then the capital cost is the interest paid on those funds. So if you have borrowed money to maintain inventory, then basically you have to pay interest on that funds. Now let us look at the third type which is obsolescence cost. Now this happens when inventory cannot be used or sold at full value due to the model changes or engineering modifications. In case of perishable goods, the Deterioration through physical damage may happen due to storage environment etc. which may result in lost value. Also, shrinkage cost should be considered which occurs due to breakage or stealing of inventory. Now let us look at the second type of inventory costs which is the ordering cost. Now every time a firm places a new order it incurs ordering cost which is the cost of preparing a purchase order for the supplier or if you are producing in-house then production order for the shop. For example, in case of purchase order the buyer spends time to decide how much to order, selection of a supplier and then negotiating the terms. Then the buyer will spend time in paperwork, follow up and receiving the inventory. Okay, so now after looking at holding or carrying cost and ordering cost, let us look at the third type of cost which is shortage or stockout cost. Now the first two costs that we looked at were basically costs of carrying inventory. That if you are holding inventory, what are the costs that you are going to incur? This third cost is basically saying what if you don't have inventory when there is a demand. So if you have a shortage of an item then that is also a cost 
so this type of cost captures the economical consequences of running out of stock so this happens when the customer places an order but it cannot be fulfilled from the inventory so basically what has happened is that you lost the opportunity to make money on the item if you had that inventory next is you lost the customer probably to another competitor and now you'll have to further incur costs to get more customers hence as you can see there is a trade off between carrying costs and the stock out costs now this balance is the key to maintain an optimized inventory